Hi, this is Carol Harnett with the Work, Love, Play Daily Video Blog. And I wanted to talk a little bit today about statistics again. And I heard a term, a statistical term, that I haven't used in a long time. Uh, last week when I was talking with someone who is a pharmacist and a professor at the University of Connecticut Medical School, and he talked to me about the term number needed to harm, which in many ways is the opposite of number needed to treat. And what that means is that's the number of people that you would need to have in a trial or a study um, in order to do harm, more harm than the control group. And isn't that an interesting way to think about statistics? And we really have this much more positive focus in many ways about number needed to treat, but often as an example about how sometimes treatments don't really work very well. So for example, um, what concerns me about statistics is that when you see the media coverage on usually Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays, after the press has gotten to review the Journal of the American Medical Association, the New England Journal of Medicine, the British Medical Journal, and they pretty much report on a lot of the what could be just a case study or published articles that are in these journals, but they don't do it within the context of whether it was statistically significant, whether these are preliminary findings. Um, they don't necessarily do it with a critical eye most of the time. Tara Parker Pope from the New York Times does a good job, and there are others, but there are more people than not that aren't giving people up or readers a full picture about what's going on. So for example, what the media really does is they really report on what's called the relative risk ratio, which is a population reflection. So if we talk about, or we look about at the general public um, as a whole, and we look at the case of statins, well, first of all, most of the statin research has been done with people who already have cardiovascular disease. So if you don't, a lot of the research essentially doesn't apply to you. And often what's, what we're told is that if you have LDLs that are above 129, or, um, well, that's usually the, the parameter that's used, that you can reduce your risk of death from heart attack by 50% if you take a statin. Well, what they're not telling you is what's called absolute risk. And absolute risk means, what does it mean to you personally? And what that means to you personally is that, particularly if you don't have cardiovascular disease, that your risk goes from um, having a high LDL from two in a thousand to die from, cardio, uh, from a heart attack, and if you take a statin, it would drop then to one in a thousand. And if you knew, if the risk was explained to you in such a way that you were told that your risk improved by 50% to not die, but what that really meant is that it went from two in a thousand to one in a thousand, you would probably have a lot more questions. Add on top of this, this concept of the number needed to harm, and as we start to explain to people the number of people we need to treat to get a negative effect, it may start to make people think even further about how, how it's really important to ask further questions and to understand from your physician whether they're talking to you about a population risk, which is this relative risk ratio, which is mainly what people talk about, or are they talking to you about absolute risk so you can ask more questions. So this is Carol Hornet with another Work, Love, Play daily video blog, one take, saying to you that I hope you've had a great work day, that you're going to enjoy some great love, and of course, that you've had a chance to play.